how would you like to pay a 0% capital gains tax rate? Who won, right? Proactive tax planning is often an overlooked way that financial professionals can save people money. In some cases, lots of money. Today we're talking about strategies for capturing a 0% capital gains tax rate. Stick around. In the United States, income gets taxed in different ways depending on how it's classified. For example, if we look up at the table, we're looking at the tax rates on ordinary income. So examples of ordinary income are things like W-2 wages from employment, um, if you're taking pre-tax dollars out of a retirement account. Those types of things are all taxed against these rates or against this rate schedule. So everyone gets a standard deduction, of course, but let's go to the center column. This is for married individuals filing joint returns. Basically, what I'm just pointing out is the first dollar, aside from the standard deduction, is taxed at 10%. That's up to about $20,000. Above this $19,900 threshold, incomes, income is taxed at 12%, and we have a tax rates that increase as income goes up. So that is ordinary income. Now, as we alluded to, capital gains get preferential tax treatment. So if we take a look up at this table, again in the center column for married individuals, take a look at this. The 0% capital gains tax rate goes all the way up to $80,800. So herein lies an opportunity. If you are an individual whose income may go to zero, uh, because of something going on in your life, maybe you're in between jobs or maybe you're transitioning into retirement and you have cash that you can live off of, which means you're not generating any taxable income, you potentially could capture capital gains upwards of $80,000 and pay a 0% capital gains tax rate. So herein lies a very interesting opportunity and uh, many possibilities for planning. So let's look at an, at an example. Our Mr. and Mrs. Smith, they're 64. Important note, they're not drawing Social Security. If you're drawing Social Security, what we're talking about here still works. It's just a little bit more complicated. It has to do with the way in which Social Security is taxed. So it's not in, an insurmountable obstacle, but it's of important note. But Mr. and Mrs. Smith, they're, par they're partially retired, transitioning into full retirement. They're still gonna earn about $50,000 this year. They're gonna take a standard deduction, which means their taxable income is their income, 50,000 minus the standard deduction, or $24,900. Now remember, if we go back to our tax table, they're married, filing a joint return. They can have up to $80,800 of joint taxable income and pay a 0% capital gains tax rate. In other words, if we take their estimated taxable income and subtract it from 80,800, we can identify a $55,900 opportunity. And just for example, let's say Mr. and Mrs. Smith had bought uh, $50,000 worth of Apple stock 10 years ago and now that $50,000 is worth $500,000. Well, we could sell a portion of that Apple stock and try to match up the amount we sell with this $55,900, and again, capture a 0% capital gain, which could, of course, create cash to be used for all sorts of things, whether it's living expenses or just to step up that basis, now I'm kind of going into jargon, so forgive me, but to in order just to capture some gains and pay that 0% rate. Let's stick with the Smiths, but look at a different, different set of circumstances. So let's say, again, the Smiths estimate that they're gonna have $50,000 of income this year, but they're charitably inclined. And fortunately, they've been good savers, they have a lot of cash savings. So they decided they want to establish a donor advised fund, or if you're not, if you don't know what a donor advised fund is, let's just say they're gonna make a $50,000 charitable gift. And that of course is deductible. So the Smith's income for tax purposes this year is gonna be their estimated gross income minus this charitable gift they're gonna be giving, which means they're zeroing out their income for tax purposes. And in other words, that means they have an $80,800 opportunity 
to capture gains that will be taxed at a 0% federal tax rate. So as you can see, the 0% capital gains tax bracket provides a lot of opportunity for planning. I've seen a lot of different circumstances where people, for instance, they might be in between jobs, so in a given year, their income is unusually low. And they may be a high net worth person, but even still, if, as long as their income is low, they may be able to ca capture a significant uh, chunk of capital gains at that 0% rate. But unfortunately, people just don't think about this. And if you don't meet with your tax preparer uh, before year end, it's too late. So a key takeaway here is there can be significant value in proactive tax planning, particularly if you hold non-retirement or non-qualified uh, investments. So another big lesson here is the advantage of having cash. Cash provides optionality. You can get your income down if you can live off cash, for example, or if you can make charitable contributions. Again, it just provides a lot of optionality. So one thing we didn't talk about here today that I just wanna mention, I wanna point out, we didn't talk about state income taxes. That's kind of a whole nother deal. Of course, it depends on where you live and so forth. So I just wanna point out, we are really confining our discussion today to, to federal income taxes. But look, I just want to say thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed the discussion, I try to keep it high level, uh, but I appreciate you've hit that subscribe button. Feel free to reach out too if you got any questions. That's what we're here for. Thanks for watching. Hope we'll see you again on the next one.